Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. This is Tail Samira and I am Samira. So today we'll be talking about unbalanced friendships and I know we all hate those, but hey, it happens. We've been the victim of it. We've also been the executioner of the unbalanced relationships. So uh, I want to talk about from my perspective what I've ex experienced. For instance, I was in college and I had this one friend and we had just met and she would ask me, oh, do you know how to dye hair? So I said, sure. She's like, oh, would you dye my hair for me? I'm like, okay, cool. You know, if I didn't have anything to do, I'd be bored after studying. Or she said, oh, can you polish my nails for me? And I'm like, oh, okay. So that happened a few times. So I didn't have a car. So I needed her to take me to Walmart and I was willing to pay. I told her I would give her a gas. So I, when I asked her, she said, oh, sure. But when it was time to go, she would always make up an excuse. Now, the thing was, I know she wasn't busy because I never saw her study and she stayed in the room. We stayed in the same quad. So basically the same apartment. So she would be right there with the door open doing nothing. So then I would ask her another time, hey, can you take me to Walmart? Because she would still be asking me to dye her hair. And so she would always, there was some excuse. So one day I approached her and I said, you know what? There's always some excuse when I ask you to take me to Walmart. However, I never come up with excuses when I do something for you. Like for instance, she, she was, uh, she lived about two hours away from her home. Her family had to move in an emergency and they needed her to come get her clothes from the house. They had already moved out. She asked what I go with her. Now, this is going to sound crazy. She told me they had cockroaches, okay? So I, I always heard of them as roaches. So I didn't know what she was talking about. I thought maybe some huge bugs was crawling around, but I was going to help her since her family had clearly got had to leave the house in a flash for whatever reason. So I went with her. When I got there, no, they were actually roaches. That's when I learned cockroaches. And roaches are the same thing, but that's something different, okay? Anyway, I'm, everything's just crawling around. I'm helping her shake her clothes out and put everything in the bag. So, of course, we get back to the city. Some time passed. I asked about Walmart. No, it could never go. So then I told her this. I said, look, I will not be helping you. I said, don't ask me. I said, we can still talk. We can still be friends or acquaintances. You know, I don't really consider her like a close friend. But uh, I said, I won't be doing that for you anymore. And she was like, oh, okay, well, thank you for bringing that to my attention. And then the same day asked me, okay, well, could you just um, dye my hair for me um, again since you know I understand? I said, no, I don't think you understand because I won't be dyeing your hair again. So that was that. And what I mean by that, that is hurtful, but that was a lesson I had to learn. That I was giving so much and she was giving barely anything. You know, she, uh, she would also ask me before I stopped doing anything for her. So this is embarrassing, I'm telling anyway. She had a boyfriend and she used to like to stalk him because she didn't believe uh, that he was busy like he said. So if I was bored in my dorm, I had nothing to do, I'd ride around with her. She would, He and his friend would be at the local IHOP eating and me and her would just be in the car. You know, we'd be listening to music. It was fun for me to just get out the dorm, you know, not having a car, not being able to do much other than on campus. So I was like, this crazy girl want to go out and, and do this? Hey, what the heck? So I would go with her. You know, and one time he busted us. He walked right up to the car and said, you all are stalking me. You know, so stuff like that I was always doing for her. She wasn't doing. Now, I do want to say there's a difference. You know, sometimes people talk about, um, they keep score with friendships, saying, oh, well, for my birthday, um, well, for my friend's birthday, I gave them this. So now it's my birthday. I'm expecting this or I call this um, time and now they should call me this time. You know, things like that can get a bit neurotic. You in a friendship, there's not going to be 50 50 ever. I, I don't believe. So if you start counting saying, oh, I did this. Now it's their turn. You know, that's not really balanced and you really want to try to get out of that but it's obvious when a person is not reciprocating anything that's the difference that's what i'm talking about in reference to unbalanced friendships now uh another story i like to tell stories because it just to me it helps bring my point and i just like to tell stories uh so i had uh cousins that i grew up with and i mean we were the closest to me we were like sisters spending a night over each other houses calling each other we both went through some 
turbulent stuff in childhood and we were both there for we were all there for each other it was three of us two were sisters and then it was me you know and we we could understand because we lived through what we went through so we were there for each other for for basically everything and the same thing happened even when they uh, moved you know in high school i would still visit them in the other city we still kept up together and everything was really good even into young adulthood, then I started noticing a change. It was just me calling all the time and they weren't calling me at all. And so when I would finally see them and, you know, I would be off to college and then I would come home too and I would try to um, meet with them. And finally, you know, they now I would say they would at least come to my city to meet with me if I was on a um, college break. And then, but I would ask them, you know, I say, hey, I have been calling. I noticed you all never like return my, really don't return calls much, or you don't ever reach out to me. You know, what's up with that? And it took me a while to say something about it, you know, but I finally did, you know, get the courage to confront them both. And then uh, for a long time, it was always their response. Oh, you know, that's not true. You know, we're calling you. Uh, you know, you're not just doing all the work. And then it still would happen. I would come, you know, maybe the next year I'd bring it up again when I would see them. And by this time, you know, I was single, but they had a, they, they had long-term relationships and had kids, you know, and I was still asking, you know, well, what, what's going on? And finally, one of them said to me, you know, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't know what was going on with the family. We wouldn't be involved in any type of way you know, uh, you, you always call us. We don't, we don't, you know, we don't call you and it's true. And I could appreciate that, you know, but still me wanting to hold on to, uh, the old relationship, that old good thing. I still would keep pushing, you know, for relationships and with them. And it would eventually turn in for me, it turned into bitterness because even I found out that one of their that their brother he's actually wasn't my cousin but i did grow up with him and i felt he was my cousin that was on their mother's side of the family he was actually killed and one of the sisters didn't call me until they asked they were in the trial you know they found out who had killed him and that hurt me so much and i never said anything to them and i for the life of me i couldn't realize how are we family and grew up and were very close and you wouldn't even call me and tell me somebody killed your cousin i mean your brother who's my my cousin you know and i didn't even i didn't even address it with him because to me i i could just see that this was really the end because if something had happened to one of my siblings or somebody else close in our family, they would have been the first people I picked up the phone to call. You know, the last uh, final blowout for me was uh, we had a family reunion and I had decided to stay at least seven days in the city. You know, I'm far away from where the family reunion was because I had talked to my two cousins and we had agreed that they would come pick me up even though they themselves had decided not to go to the family reunion. But I would stay at their house. They would take me back to the airport. Well, I get there, call, call, got no phone calls from them. Okay, I am mad. I don't like where I had to stay, the family that I was around. I am pissed. You know, I, did, I decided not to change my ticket, but I just stayed the whole time. So I never heard back from them until about two weeks later, one of the cousins uh, texted me and said, oh, are you still in the city? And I'm thinking, wow, really? Am I still in the city? And she knew my itinerary. Two weeks later, after that, uh, I think we haven't talked much. We are friends on Facebook. But there, and I could be bitter about that if I wanted to. But I choose to look at it differently. Because someone I know told me, you know, when I was complaining about the failed, you know, friendship, she said, you know, people have a lot going on in their lives that you don't really know about. You know, they have children, they have husbands, and they could be very busy with that, you know, and it's just best to allow those relationships when they disintegrate, just leave it be. 
instead of getting upset with the people and I'm holding on forgiveness in my heart about them, I look at it like this. We were the best of friends in middle school all the way up into young adulthood. I mean, we were ride or die. I love them like sisters. So for me, instead of letting bitterness set in anymore, because it, it was a lot of bitterness there, if you notice, I keep saying it. Uh, I decided to say, hey, it is what it is. We had a great relationship then. That was its season, and it was beautiful in its season. And to try to hold on to it when that has passed is a terrible thing to do. You know, just because you grew up with somebody and you were the best of friends and, you know, you hung out all the time and had things in common, that does not mean that it's going to continue. And you set yourself up for hurt. If you cannot realize when a season is over and when a new one has begun. So even though I don't talk with them right now, you know, at this point, if they were to need something from me, I would not hesitate to give it to them. But as far as calling for birthdays or uh, holidays or things of that, that nature, none of that happens with us. And I decided not to be bitter about that. Embrace it for what it was. And now it's time to move on. So that's my uh, say for unbalanced friendships. So please, if you like this video, please like and hit that subscribe button. It will not hurt you to do so. Also, uh, if you have any comments, feel free to leave your, comment, your comments below if you have any questions. And then I'll be sure to get back to you and, and respond. Let's have a dialogue. Have you had any unbalanced relationships before? You know, what do you think about this video? Have a great one. Bye.